Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's take a look at Kepler's third law. And the third law is probably the most interesting law in that it gave us a tremendous insight into the size and the orbital motion of the planets of our solar system. It turns out that he discovered that for every planet revolving around the sun, that the period squared equals the distance between the sun and the object, and that came the planet cubed, if we consider T expressed in years and R expressed in astronomical units, which is the distance between the Earth and the Sun. So if we take that the distance equals the velocity times time and we solve for time and therefore we solve for the period, is the distance, the orbital distance, 2 pi r divided by the velocity, which can be calculated by taking the orbital velocity equation. That then results that we have a relationship between the, the period squared and the radius cubed, but it, the, the relationship is equal to 4 pi squared over g times the mass of the sun in this case. But that doesn't equal 1, so because we said that that ratio should equal 1. But let's say that we solve this equation for 1, but in other words we put r cubed there and t squared there, we solve it equal to 1, and we plug in all the values. In the case of the Earth, that is the average distance between the Sun and the Earth, g, the gravitational constant, the mass of the Sun, the number of days in a year, and the number of seconds in a solar day, and yes indeed, 1 equals 1. That means that that relationship was indeed true, and that's what, that, that's what Kepler discovered. Also, it allowed us to figure out the mass of the object that was um, around which we revolve. So, for example, if we know the radius between the Sun and the Earth, we know the period, and we know the, the gravitational constant, we could then figure out the mass of the object we're circling. So that was a tremendous discovery when Kepler figured out the third law, where this is indeed true, and that is how it's done.